the immune system protects us against cancer. Mm -hmm. Has your research indicated otherwise, Andreas? The immune system is always there to keep the body free of contaminants. We have things like macrophages that devour waste products, toxins, you know, chemicals um, get you know, basically converted into harmless matter. And they are mostly circulating in the lymphatic system. So the, the immune cells that are there are to, first of all, make sure that the body is toxin free. Okay. If that is no longer possible because of organs such as the liver, the, the large intestine, uh, the lungs and the kidneys and the skin, they become overtaxed with toxins. They're no longer eliminating uh, them as quickly as they are generated. Then the body is basically forced to start accumulating them elsewhere. And that means in the tissue fluid surrounding the cells. And the lymphatic system has little ducts, there are little capillaries that are draining away, it's like vacuum away, like a okay. vacuum, sucking up uh, all the you know, harmful ingredients and metabolic waste products and then uh, converting them, detoxifying them in the lymphatic system using the immune system's uh, arsenal of weapons. And right. when there are simply too many toxins created, uh, usually in the gastrointestinal tract, that then make their way into the lymphatic system, then the immune system gets um, tired, are constantly battling those poisons, and they can no longer be removed. And that's where the body starts accumulating toxins. So the first line of defense, the immune system, is working at right. trying to keep you know, the body healthy. But it gets overloaded. And then eventually when the suffocation occurs, when the cells can no longer breathe enough oxygen, they don't get enough nutrients, and they will have to mutate into cancer cells in order to uh, maintain some kind of functioning or to draw the poisons away, like mushrooms pulling mm -hmm. the, the poisons from the soil of the forest in order to keep the rest of the forest healthy. So in nature we have similar situations. Uh, in our body we do the same thing if we become contaminated. And, and then uh, the immune system will make sure that it doesn't attack those cancer cells, those particular types of cancer cells. It won't. No, it won't, because they're, when you look at a tumor, 60% of the, the, the cells in the tumor are actually white cells, mm -hmm. white yeah, blood cells, that are uh, ca you know, immune cells that are not doing anything to get rid of or kill the cancer cells. Typically, a healthy body will kill uh, millions of cancer cells per day, because when you turn over 30 billion cells, you always have some of them that are cancerous cells. Right. And the immune system immediately takes care of them. There are different uh, ways to do that. Some cells, killer cells, they drill holes into the body of a, a cancer cell and it explodes and then uh, it's gone. So the, and then the debris you know, is mm -hmm. also removed. So there is no problem for the immune system doing that in a healthy person. But once you have suffocation building up in the body, it's a totally different you know, ball game. The immune system will um, be informed by the cancer cell. There's a protein produced by the cancer cell that attaches itself you know, to the surface of the cancer cell and says, don't touch me. An immune cell is, is recognizing that and says, okay, I'm not going to touch you. So it leaves the cancer cells alone. So it's, it's a, a wisdom. Yes, it's a particular protein mm -hmm. that is you know, you know, getting to the surface of the, 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 you know, the cancer cell and it says, don't touch me, I'm, you know, don't do anything to me, I'm on your side. I'm a helper cell. <laughs> I'm a cancer cell that does a good job. If you kill me, then uh, I won't be able to do that job, the dirty job in cleaning up the environment. So the, the, the immune system is very, very you know, clever. It's, it's just in, in medicine, um, conventional medicine, we think that the body is stupid. That's we true. We think it, it yeah. makes so many mistakes, 44,000 <laughs> different mistakes. Mm -hmm. and there is no such thing as a mistake. Uh, even a genetic mistake, you know, that is something that is a compensation mechanism. Um, it prevents a, a much more serious disaster that otherwise would happen. So again, uh, yeah, it's, it's important to take it into perspective that there is wisdom behind every action that the body is you know, 
producing and it's not that the body is just um, you're incapable and we need to rescue it. The healing always has to take place in the body, by the body. We cannot do that for the body. We can set the preconditions for the right. body to heal and that is our job and that is the responsibility of every person and sometimes we need a little help, you know, someone mm -hmm. telling us you know, what to do but you know, in, in real effect the body has to do the job of healing itself. There is no other way. That's very interesting though that you say that the immune system backs off. Yes at a certain point when it can't cleanse the body any longer. Yes, when it is, you're basically you're passing on the responsibility of doing the dirty job mm -hmm. um, that the lymphatic system and immune system is no longer capable of, then uh, the, the, the body will have to take recourse to cancer cells. And most of the contamination starts in the digestive system. Undigested food is the greatest source of poisoning the body. Mm. Bacteria that decompose the undigested food produce amines, nitrosamines, uh, cadaverins, putriskins, poisons that are so poisonous that if you smell it outside there's fermenting, rotting food or a, an animal that is run over and a couple of days later you pass by and you smell that stench. That is the poison that we create in our body. So the body will have to defend itself against those poisons um, because they are absorbed into the lymphatic system you know, from the intestines. The, the intestines are very protective of themselves. They don't want this thing to, that stuff to go through into the rectum area mm -hmm. and cause damage, severe damage to the rectum. It wants to make sure that the worst poisons are absorbed into the lymphatic system um, where the, the poisons can be neutralized in some way or another. If they are initially uh, you know, you know, dealt with by the immune system or if the immune system is not capable of uh, you know, breaking them down, then they start be, they're surrounded by fat cells or they're absorbed by fat cells mm -hmm. and that inc requires an increase of fat growth in the body or they are absorbed or surrounded by fluids that are then increasing the fluid content in the body which we call swelling or weight gain. Mm -hmm. And so the weight gain begins in the gastrointestinal tract, mostly in the belly button area where there is a lymph center uh, that is called cisterna chili. And that is the largest lymph vessel uh, system we have in the body. And that begins, begin, begins to become edemic as it tries to deal right. with the poisons. And that's what you call, oh, I'm getting a tummy, I'm starting to get you know, um, fat. Mm -hmm and then it starts spreading to other parts of the body until the whole body is basically accumulating uh, fat cells and uh, fluids, water, f lymph fluid, which, will, which just shows how mm -hmm. contaminated the body is. Thank you for that information.